up, guys? On this week's Essential Skills for Woodworkers series, I wanted to talk about buying tools. It's one of those things that's very rarely talked about, and I wanted to share my philosophy, what I get new, what I get used. Very few things in my shop did I buy new. In fact, most of the things in my shop I got for a very, very good deal. One of the things is people have tools and they put them on Craigslist and they think they're worth way more than they are. I mean, there'd be 20 year old tools and they wanna take $200 off of the brand new version of that tool's price. And to me, that's just ridiculous. So um, I wanted to share some of the stories, give you a little shop tour, and show you how I acquired some of the tools in my shop. So let's get started. So when it comes to buying new versus used, my philosophy is always buy the best tool you can afford. And I think that applies to a lot of things in the shop, but when it comes to large power tools, I almost always buy used, and I decide what it is that I want in my shop or what needs to be upgraded, and I start looking. But I'm always willing to wait. Uh, one of the things that I did when I got this CNC machine, this took me about six months to pull the trigger on one of these, and I was terrified of putting out this Axiom Pro 6. Uh, I think it, the base price is $6,000, and then uh, with accessories, it goes up from there. I think all in total, I paid about eight grand for this, but it was an investment for my shop and I use it in prototyping. I use it for engraving the dovetail jigs. I use it for making the CNC dovetail alignment boards. And so this is a tool that, that has shown a return in my shop and has already paid for itself. So uh, one of the things that I would always buy new is something with, with technology in it, something with computer programming in it, like a CNC. Um, very rarely do I stray from my buy used first uh, mentality, but with this CNC, I feel like it was a fabulous investment. For anybody who's looking for a CNC, Axiom makes great ones. I'll leave a link down in the description, but I highly suggest that when you are ready, you do get a CNC because it has really increased workflow in the shop and it's been a lot of fun to use. Um, but right next to the CNC is my shop air cleaner. My dust collector is a 220, two horsepower, two stage dust collector. It came as a single stage with the filter on top. The guy had it listed on Craigslist for $400. I ended up paying $200 for this because I, when I looked it up, it, he had listed it as woodworking vacuum. And because of that, because he didn't list it as a dust collector, it had been on Craigslist for four and a half months. And I knew that nobody was gonna find it. And so I texted him and said, uh, you know, I had to drive about 60 minutes for it. So I said, you know what, I'll give you 200 bucks for it. I'll drive down and pick it up today. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And I said, okay, if you change your mind, let me know. A week later, he texted me and said, yeah, no problem, come on down. Uh, so I drove down and picked it up. Um, this is a great example of something to buy used. And when you look on Craigslist for things, try and look for misspellings, look for things where people don't use the right word and it's been on Craigslist for a long time. Then be willing to offer them a price that you're willing to buy it for and, and don't bend on that and say, you know what, I'm willing to wait. And I think the best example of that is my jointer. This is a jet eight inch helical head jointer. It was originally in uh, the engineering department at SpaceX. Uh, an engineer who had worked there uh, had a huge, beautiful home woodworking shop and he had this listed on Craigslist for almost $2,000. And you know, these things new are, are about three grand and I just wasn't willing to pay that. I wanted to join her, but I was willing to wait. And so um, I offered him uh, $1,200 to deliver it. In fact, I have the text message conversation here. I said, you know what, I'm willing to drive down for 1200. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And I said, well, if you want, if you change your mind, please let me know. And a week later he said, hey, my wife and I are coming up to Santa Barbara. We'll bring it up for 1500. And I said, I'm only willing to go to 1200, please let me know. And then uh, two weeks later, he texted me and said, okay, if you wanna come down, I'll do it for 1200. And I said, you know what, um, I'll take it for 800 and I'll drive down today. And again, I didn't hear from him for a week. And then a week later he said, all right, can you do 850? So I said, yeah, no problem. I drove down there, I picked it up. I got a joiner that's $3,000 new for 800 bucks. And that honestly was one of my, my best deals that I got off Craigslist, but I was willing to wait. It took about a month to get the deal done. And the thing is, when you are buying machines, you're competing with almost nobody. Think about how many woodworkers you know in your area. I think I know four in my town, and I know that not all of them are in, market, in the market for an eight inch joiner at the same time. So. I like to make an offer, be willing to wait. There's no rush. I'll get the tool when I get the tool. Um, but I certainly am not gonna do something where I end up spending way more money than I had to. Um, so that, that's a great example of getting a great tool for a used price. But 
When it comes to hand tools, I really believe that's something you should buy new and you should buy the best you can afford. Uh, one of the problems with like hand planes, for example, is that they've been sharpened over the years and the blade is not square, it has a heavy camber on it or there's pitting in the, the sole of the, the plane. And if woodworking is something you want to do for a long time, any hand plane you buy is going to last you forever. And so that's something you want to buy new. Everything comes nice, oiled, there's no rust on it, the blade is square, it's easy to sharpen. Uh, so I recommend for hand tools like saws and things like that, you always buy new and buy the best you can afford. And if, if you really can't and you're really doing a woodworking on a budget, buy a really terrible used hand plane off eBay and learn how to refurbish it. Um, but when it comes to measuring devices, hand tools, bits and blades like router bits, saw blades, that kind of thing, that's something that I always buy new. Uh, speaking of blades, let's head over to the bandsaw and I'll tell you how I negotiated that and what I did to get a great deal on that. So this is my Grizzly 18 inch bandsaw and one of the things that you can do when you're buying used tools is ask questions. And so what I like to always do is ask, oh, why are you selling it? And this was one of those cases where a guy was moving across the country in a week uh, and he had gotten rid of all his stuff, but he had not been able to get rid of his bandsaw. And this is, when I got this, and it still is pretty much new, um, these are on sale right now for 900 bucks on grizzly.com and usually they're 1200. And he, was, he had this listed for 650 on Craigslist, but you know he told me he was moving in a week and I told him, when you're ready, I will take it for 450. And he said, "Oh, I don't know. You know, can you do 500?" And I said, "I'm sorry, that's my budget for the bandsaw is 450." And uh, that was in the morning. He called me back later that day and said, "Okay, I'll do it. Come pick it up." So, uh, if you can ask questions when you're buying used tools, then I think it can lead you to making an offer that is going to get you the best deal you can. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about the table saw. Sometimes when you're buying tools you can't get a good deal and it's about recognizing a good opportunity. This is a 52 inch saw stop PCS that I saw pop up on Craigslist. I had been looking for a saw stop for quite a while. Um, I was looking for the smaller tabled version, but uh, this popped up on Craigslist for $1,900 and it was brand new. And I knew that that was gonna go immediately. So I called the guy immediately and said, I'll give you your asking price. Uh, please don't sell it to anybody else. I'll, you know, it was about an hour away. I'll come down right now. And he said, oh, I'm not at home, but you know, uh, I, I'll, I promise I'll give it to you. You called first. So uh, six hours later, I, he finally called me back and said, oh man, people have been banging down my door to get this thing. And uh, you're lucky that uh, I'm a man of my word because they've been offering more than $1,900. And what had happened is he had bought this thing. He'd had it for a month. He set off the brake cartridge and his wife made him sell it. And so this was one of those times where I knew there was no place to negotiate and I need to just jump on it quickly. So, um, you know, these things, depending on options, can run up to $3,000 and they're phenomenal table saws. So uh, this was one of those times when I recognized a good opportunity on Craigslist and jumped on it right away. So sometimes you can't lowball somebody and if you do, you're gonna, you're gonna have some tools slip out of your fingers and that's okay. Cause like I said before, you need to be willing to wait. But this was one of those times where there was no time to wait and Honestly, it was it was pretty out of my budget at the time, but um, it was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. Uh, speaking of opportunities I couldn't pass up, let's talk about the drill press. This tool is the best deal I've ever gotten on a tool and the reason why you should never stop watching Craigslist. I check Craigslist every morning. It's just a pin tabbed in my Google Chrome. I look through the front page of the tools uh, just to see what's available. This 1950s Craftsman's drill press popped up on Craigslist for just make me an offer. It was a guy whose dad had had a, a garage with a few tools in it and he was getting older and was going to move to a senior living facility and needed to get rid of a bunch of his stuff. Uh, he couldn't move it on his own and he posted a, an ad on Craigslist that said just make me an offer. So I wrote him an email and said I'll give you 50 bucks for it. I'll come help you load it right now. He said no problem. Come on by. When I got there I was so blown away. This thing has been used so little in its 60, 70 years of life that it still has the safety stickers on it. I mean it was incredible. This thing is brand new. I oiled it up. Uh, and I got rid of the other drill press that I had and made a table for it. And this thing has treated me so well. 
It's a solid piece of machinery. I looked on eBay, vintage, uh, fully refurbished versions of these go for up to $800. Uh, but this is something I probably will never sell because I love it so much. And the guy was just happy it was going to a good home. He said, I won't use it. My dad's never going to use it again. So I'm just happy it's going to a place where it's going to get used and loved. So, um, you know, another way to get tools is make sure your friends know you're a woodworker. In fact, let me show you the, the sander that I got. So this is one of those examples of, hey, my friend knew I was a woodworker. He was cleaning out his garage and he had his grandpa's old belt sander. This thing was covered in rust and it was a total piece but it worked and in fact I ended up having to put a new switch on it and I cleaned off the rust painted it red but it's a, it's a delta four inch belt sander this thing works like a gem and you know that's a great thing about old tools they were designed to last so uh, just because something's rusty uh, or is missing a power switch if you're willing to do a little bit of work uh, you can get tools like this for free I mean he just gave this to me I spent about two hours cleaning off rust with vinegar and water and a little bit of spray paint and this thing works like a dream. In fact, I use this thing all the time. So it, it's a great example of getting tools for free. That's not always the mentality you have. Certain things like clamps, for example, or air compressors, uh, tools that are gonna get beat up and have one function are tools that you can be cheap on. Harbor Freight sells a bunch of great clamps that uh, are very inexpensive. These the Walt and Irwin clamps come up on Black Friday and holiday season sales every year. Same with these Bessie clamps. And it's it's one of those things that you're gonna use a ton of that you don't need to buy new or you can buy very inexpensive versions of. Uh, clamps rarely come up on Craigslist because as you know, you can never have enough clamps, but make sure that you are just always looking at Home Depot, Ace Hardware, um, places that sell kind of basic tools like this and, and see when they come on sale. Because they always do, it's great to decide what it is you need before you need it and sort of look at those things. Other great ways to get clamps for cheap are pipe clamps. They're the same thing as parallel clamps. Uh, they're just not as fancy, but they work the same way and you can add calls to them. Um, or if you're gonna get parallel clamps, you can do things like go check in pawn shops. Sometimes I've found them in there. One thing to know if you're going to pawn shops is they're always trying to make the most amount of money that they can. And just like people on Craigslist, they think things are worth way more than they are. So when you go into a pawn shop, always remember that price that you see on the price tag is not the final price. You can always negotiate with pawn shop people. Uh, so especially in there, you know, look for ways to negotiate. Let's head back over to the bench and wrap this up. So woodworking can be a very expensive hobby and we all know that any way you cut it, it's going to cost money for materials, for tools. And I suggest that you build your shop up over time, never be in a rush to get tools. I know when I first got into woodworking, I was so excited about everything that I would just buy things and I'll be like, oh, I need this, I need that. And then I would end up with tools I never use or didn't really fulfill the purpose that I needed them to. And there's a lot of tools that I regret purchasing. And most importantly, the thing I regret the most is buying tools more than once. Uh, I'm a big believer of buy once, cry once, which is why I take my time and look for the big tools in my shop in auctions on Craigslist. And I, I'm willing to wait because if you buy a cheap tool that is you trying to save money, then you're gonna end up having to replace it down the road when you get more into the craft or you need to upgrade. And so, uh, you know, I believe in buy once, cry once. And I know it sucks, but sometimes you need to bite the bullet on the tools that are important. And that's things where that they need to be square, you know, like table saws, band saws, drum sanders, planers, jointers, things that need to have flat reference services. It's important to get the best you can afford. And, and if it's not a lot right now, that's okay too. Um, try maybe going for older tools and refurbishing them. But one of the things I always recommend when you go to check out used tools is bring a square. Make, thing, make sure things are square and not bent. Bring a straight edge so you can see that tables are flat. And if they're not, they're not worth what they have it on there for. They're worth a lot less because that is a massive obstacle to overcome. It requires grinding, sanding, uh, tuning. And so make sure that you make an offer that you feel comfortable with and stick to it and be willing to walk away and be willing to, to wait because people will call you back. Woodworking tools are not in massive demand. And so if they're selling them, they need to get rid of them and they're gonna be willing to come down to your price. So, hey guys, let me know what else you'd like to see on the Essential Skills for Woodworkers series. Uh, stay safe in the shop, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new here, and have a wonderful day.